Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, and this is the fourth video in the series on login and reporting in VT SCADA. Now, in the first few videos, I covered most of what there was to know about the login side of things. The previous video introduced the reporting side with the historical data viewer. And now, it's time to take a look at the reports page and the reports tag. The reports page is a standard part of every VT SCADA installation. It's designed to be easy to use, pretty much paint by numbers. The first step is to select a report. You can report on totals, snapshots, communication driver health, where seven separate variables are logged for every driver, and whether you configure them or not, they're just going to be there. The standard report will give you a simple data dump of all the raw logged values for any selected tag, much like we saw with the historical data viewer. Now, for this example, I'm going to use the analog summary report. Step number two is to select the tags. The filters will be pre-selected based on the type of report you chose. Notice that the group has already been set to analogs because I chose the analog summary report. I can further filter based on the area property of my tags. Double click on tags in the left list to add them to the report. You could use the arrows in the center, but most people find that it's easiest just to point and double click. Now, after selecting the tags, I strongly recommend saving the group. This will make it easier for you later on in order to regenerate this report. Once the tags have been selected, move on to step number three. This is the reporting period. Now, there's an extensive list of presets available, or you can spin the dials in order to set any time span that you want. Now, be careful. If the uh, preset says trigger time, then it's referring to when you click the run report button. If you want a specific start and end time, you're going to need to set them yourself using either one of the presets or by using the, uh, the dials to set a particular start at this moment and in another one. I'm going to select the last two hours before the trigger time. You can double the number of uh, reporting periods in step number four. Now, if I want to have the last two hours and then the last two hours before that, I could say two previous periods. So if I leave that empty, it's just going to give me two hours. This won't give me four hours. It'll give me a summary for two hours and then another summary for the two hours prior to that. You could also have days, weeks, whichever time period you want. Let's leave that as a single period by leaving it empty. Now, moving on to step number five, I get to choose the destination for the report. Essentially, this is a choice between screen, printer, or file, but you get lots of choices for the format to use in each case. If you select one of the text formats, then assuming you've configured email within the, uh, the properties for the application, you could have it actually send the report out through your configured email server whenever it's generated. I'm going to choose the uh, screen display so that we can see something on this video. Now, finally, in step number six, there are a few last options. Now, since I chose to send the report to the screen, I also get a choice of whether that's going to use a plain text format or, if I own the program, whether it will use Excel for the display. You must have Excel in order to be able to do this. If I'm using Excel, then I get the choice of choosing separate sheets or tables. Now, what that is referring to is not each tag. It's referring to each previous period. So if I had chosen two previous periods, I would get a separate worksheet for each period. Finally, if I'm doing that, there's a choice to rename the sheets. We'll leave all of that be and click the report button, run report button, just to see what happens. There, Excel runs, opens up in the background, and great. 
Now, for each select report or tag, it's going to give me all of the analog summary information for the last two hours, the average, the minimums, the maximum. A total on a tank level probably is not very informative. But um, one other thing, notice that it's going to use the tag description field in order to, uh, to label each tag. Now, this report would be far easier to read if I made sure that each description was unique. Something to keep in mind as you're configuring your tags. Let's close that and go back to the screen. The next time I want to run the same report, I can save a lot of time if everything I've put into this configuration is saved somewhere. And the easiest place to save it would be within a report tag. Let's open the tag browser and have a look at one of those. I'll start by creating a brand new report tag. Call it demo. I'm not going to worry about the name and description. Now, this is organized the same way as the reports page, paint by numbers, where on the first step, I get to choose what type of report to create. Going to the second, I get to choose the tags. Now, I can choose any tags at all, but this is again going to be far easier if I've got a named group that I could load. Now, by the way, it will also enforce you must save a group before you're allowed to move on to the next step so that the report tag can find that group again. I'm going to make this easy by just choosing my tank levels group that I had before, and I don't have to do any extra work. You also get to choose and re-sort the order of the tags. And by the way, that was true back in the reports page as well. The order of the tags in the list is the same order it will use in the report. Moving on to the time period, I can set my preset time of whichever time period I'd like. I could also have this triggered according to an event. So perhaps you could have your report run when an alarm is used as the, uh, the triggering tag, or I could make this report run every single day at 8 a.m. The destination is much the same as it was before. I can go to a default printer or to a screen display, text file, anything at all. Perhaps I'll leave that as default printer for now. And finally, a few options if I were using a screen report. Plus, there are two brand new options here that we did not see before. First off, this is going to generate an event in the alarm history when the report triggers. You pretty much always want to leave that one selected. It'll also log that event using the re report area name. Now, why generate an event when the report triggers? Remember, I'm sending my report to the printer. If somebody comes along and steals that report off the printer before I get to it, well, I'll be able to check the history to know that it did in fact run. Now, that last comment is a nice segue into a useful feature of this tag. I can draw my report uh, my report tag by opening up the areas and finding my report tag here, and draw that as a button that I put on the screen. Now, you might wonder why I'm doing that when it's already configured to run automatically at eight o'clock in the morning, which presumably is when you need the report to run. Here's the reason. If I go into the configuration of that button and open the properties, I've got an option in here to rerun the last scheduled report. So again, if someone steals that report off the printer, I check the log in the history and see that it was generated. Rather than go off and try to fight the person for the report, I can simply press this button and it will go back, check the history, and whatever the configuration was, run this report again. And that's good up until the next day when the, a brand new report would be created. So there we go. Reporting is just as easy as that to configure and use. There's just one more video to go in the series. And in that, I'll describe some of the more advanced features of logging and reporting.